Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Today, we are going to talk about investing and the stock market and a podcast that I just listened to. It is a Wealthy On podcast. And I know I've talked about that podcast in the past. I've kind of quit listening. They changed hosts. I'm just not finding everything valuable there, but they did have one that I checked out this week. And I've listened to it about four or five times already, the exact same podcast, because it is so informative. And the guy that they have on is really good about just kind of breaking things down so you can understand them. Um, But the title of that podcast is Why Passive Investing Could Crash the Market. So I've taken some notes and I'm just going to kind of summarize it for you. If you guys want to listen to it, go over to Wealthion and listen to that podcast. Otherwise, I'm just going to try to summarize it here for you. What caught my attention is that they were talking about the gentleman that he was interviewing was talking about this opt-out 401k system. And I did not know that that option started in 2006. And that was the Pension Protection Act that allowed... I didn't know this. I didn't. I just assumed people just started doing it. I didn't know that it was something that was passed. And so the Pension Protection Act allowed employers to now have an opt-out 401k system rather than an opt-in. Now, I talked about this a little while back when I was mad about 401ks and all these people that are putting money there and they don't even know they're putting money there because it is now an opt-out system. And I was telling you guys, you know, to pay attention to that and yada, yada. Well, now I find out that it's a thing that started in 06. And I mean, I was still working for somebody then, but I was not working for a major corporation that just had this opt-in, you know, this, that it was just that that it was an opt-out system because I was not putting money into a 401k at that point. Um, But I found that that was interesting. So he, though, elaborated on this and that what happened is we've got this Pension Protection Act, we've got this opt-out system. So more money was going into the market because we have employer employment, right? So more money is going into the market, which means the market looks good because people are putting it in there. And there was a huge influx of people putting money in after this act passed. And so now we have this falsification, really, in my opinion, of the market because you have people putting money in there that don't even know what they're putting money into. However, there was a lawsuit a while back held up in federal court that somebody sued their employer because they said that the employer wasn't handling the money correctly. So now if we have an opt-out system and we're automatically becoming passive investors, now we need to protect the employer. So the government came in and said, yes, let's protect the employer. So then they passed the Qualified Default Investment Alternative. That is an account that he calls is full of low-cost products and it's a target date fund. So I looked up what a target date fund is, and it's just basically an automatic rebalance of your low-cost investments. So now we've got people that are all sort of in the same thing, but how he explained it is that these passive investors in these target funds, are all of their stuff is sort of being invested in the big companies that drive the S&P. And so what happens is when people are coming in and out, it is affecting that. So now we don't have high employment because employment numbers are down. So what happens if nobody's employed? They're not putting money into their 401k because there's no more passive investing. They're not just sticking money there. They're not just they're no longer in this opt-out system, right? And now that's affecting, that's going to affect the market. So he's sort of warning people about the fact that, hey, be aware of what's going on in the economy. We have no employment growth. According to him, there's no employment growth. So if we have 
people that are not employed and we have boomers retiring and they're coming out of the market, we're going to have a market shift. And apparently in 2020, somebody did an analysis of if you put a dollar in the market, how does that affect the market? Is it a dollar for dollar exchange? No, it's actually if you put a dollar in, the market increases by five to 10 or it lowers by five to 10 if you take a dollar out. We've never heard that before. I've never heard that before. And so if we're taking a dollar out of our 401ks and our IRAs, what's happening to the market? Well, what happens when we don't have employment and people are taking that money out because they need it to live? What happens when boomers are starting to take that money out? We have a five to eight times that dollar is what's affecting in a market draft. And so these it, 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 it was just very eye-opening to me. This was very eye-opening to me because I have never heard anybody else talk about this opt-out crap because it's absolute crap. My daughter just started working for a big company and I told her, okay, she's been there 30 days. I'm like, make sure that you have opted out of the 401k option. And she said, well, I have to sign up for it. And I didn't sign up for it. I said, I, you know what? I don't care. I don't trust them. Make sure that you have opted out, that you have not signed, you have not filled out any paperwork to be putting money in the market. Because why? She's most likely not going to work there her entire life. It is a good starter job. But why would you be putting money somewhere where I know, I know the child, right? She's going to be self-employed to some extent. She is not going to be a superstar employee. She already isn't. She is, <laughs> she is questioning them on their training and why they have them do X, Y, and Z for training because it was silly. She already knew how to treat a customer. Why are she being told how to treat a customer? This is a waste of time. She's, she is like her mother in that aspect. I was always a good employee, but I was never what they wanted in the aspect of shut up and do what I say. I questioned everything because can't we be more efficient? Isn't that what we all want is just to be more efficient here. I think I'm helping and I'm just pissing everybody off at the company, you know? And so I was like, make sure that you're not in that system. But it's funny because it has created passive investors. And I've talked about the passive investor thing before. But we also then have passive brokers who just are managing this 401k and they're not even managing it. According to what this guy is saying, we're not even managing it. All we're doing is saying, hey, I'm going to sign you up for the 401k. It's going to go into X fund and everybody's is going to go into the same fund. So many people are not managing their own 401ks because guess what? It's not your full-time job. It's not what you know. Your broker is not in there moving stuff about. He's just putting it in a fund. And you're not winning. You are not winning. And this guy is saying the exact same thing. It is not the best place to have your 401k money. Go listen, because I don't want to be putting words in his mouth either. But go listen to the podcast. It's very very interesting to hear that piece of it. Now, they were talking about other stuff like raising interest rates and lowering interest rates for the economy and how is that going to help? And he, may, he did make a good comment there too. And he said something to the extent of, you know, it's not just about home rates. Everybody looks at the interest rate on a home and they're, they're like, oh God, interest rates are so high, we need to lower them. He's like, where the problem is, is the credit cards. Because so many people are not able to live, they're putting all this money on credit cards. He's like, if we lower interest rates by 2%, is it really going to matter? It's 27% credit card rate and it goes to 25. That's not a huge decrease for people that are living off of credit cards. And so, you know, interest rates alone, lowering interest rates alone are not going to necessarily help inflation. And as I have said before, low interest rates just give people permission to go buy crap they don't need. And so then they just create more debt. 
which if you look at what Nelson was talking about and becoming your own banker, it's the volume of interest that matters. It is not the rate. We're like, oh, we want low interest rates at 2%, but then we go out and we buy three things, a boat, a camper, and a vehicle at 3%. And guess what? It's the volume of interest that matters because now we essentially have a 9% loan rate. I'm just going to do that. Like, I would assume that it's going to be that way. I haven't ran those numbers. But you have to look at the volume of what is going out, okay? Then he made some stupid comment that I do not agree with, is we need to tax the wealthy because the wealthy are the problem because they keep buying stuff because they can afford it. So we need to tax them and take some of their money in taxes. But he said, don't distribute it to the you know, don't distribute it to the people that are in the lower classes. I don't know what the hell he thinks is going to happen to it then. Like, where where the heck is it going to go? However, what he didn't realize, and this is the one piece I do not agree with, what he didn't realize is the wealthy don't pay taxes because they understand the tax code and they understand what they can do to reduce their taxes. There's not tax loopholes for the love of Pete. That it is tax advantages. All you need to do is understand the tax code. There are people out there that will teach it to you. There are CPAs. There are tax consultants, tax planning consultants that will help you lower your tax bracket. So I don't know where this dude thinks that the wealthy are not going to end up paying taxes. He's just pissed off at Google at the moment because they want to write a big check. And yet, should they be able to buy their way out of issues that they've created? No, they should not. But that doesn't mean that they need to be taxed more so we can't have them big money. For the love of Pete, wealthy people get wealthy because they understand how money works and they understand how the tax code works. So I don't understand his thought process there. It's actually got me a little riled up if you can't tell. But the first portion of that interview was super good because he actually explained Everything that I have talked about, the fact that, the, you know, there was no 401k and IRA before 74 and 80. He said the same thing. I was like, whoa, what is going on? So we didn't have 401ks and IRAs before the 70s. And then in 06, we've got this pension act. And then we have to protect the employers. And what did Nelson say in becoming your own banker? He talks about the fact that the government creates a rule and then they create all the exceptions to the rule to make it look like they're helping you. They create an exception to make it look like they're helping you. They're not helping anybody. Just, oh, oh, this just gets me so mad. Pay, Nelson was not wrong. He lived through all of that. Now, how do we get away from all of that and we don't have to worry about investing when we do the infinite banking concept because we're using whole life insurance. So that's fantastic, right? We don't have to worry about what this is invested in. We have guarantees. Everything is set, which is why I love it. My policy is, is guaranteed to grow. Does not matter what the boomers do. Does not matter what employment does my policy is going to grow guaranteed by contract every single year. I can use that money for whatever I want to purchase. I can use it to purchase cash flowing assets. I can use it to put braces on the kids, I, whatever. I just talked about on Farming Without the Bank podcast this week. I'm talking about the infinite ways to use the infinite banking concept. Go over there and listen to it. It is not just for farmers, okay? But then I can go in back to my policy at retirement and I can borrow against it for a tax savings at retirement, right? I'm not going to claim that income because it's borrowed money. So we are lowering our tax bracket at retirement. I have talked to two people last week that were wondering how they can lower their tax bracket because they have too much money at retirement now. Guess what? They've retired and they've inherited money all at the same time. Not a great combination, right? I'm in my 70s. Mom and dad die. I inherit some stuff. Now I'm being penalized tax-wise for that. It's kind of the perfect storm. 
And guess who knows this? The government knows this. The people that make money and the people that work really good savers, the clients that I talk to that have saved 10, 15, 20% of their income are being penalized in retirement because they have too much money there. They have to take it out. I have clients that are farming, money in retirement, over 72 years old, and have inheritance. Wondering what they can do to reduce taxes. Nothing now. It's too late. You're already in the middle of the storm. There's no way for me to protect you to get you out of that. The only thing you can do is go buy something and figure out how the tax code is going to benefit you. Can you create some expenses? Can you start some businesses? Is there a nonprofit? Whatever those things are. We should be taught the tax code in school. There should be a whole college lesson on the U.S. tax code. But there's not for a reason. Okay. That's all. That's all today. (laughs) That was about an hour's worth of their information down to 15 minutes. So go listen to it. It, It's very, it was very interesting. And it made a lot of sense what this guy is talking about until he got to the end. And then I'm not on the same wavelength. Like maybe I need to just have it caught. Dude. Okay, explain to me how that's going to help to charge the wealthy more taxes. That's just going to... So that's going to make me give the government more money so I can buy less stuff. And then the government does what with it? Stupid shit. That's what the government's going to do with it. Excuse my French today. Try not to curse on these because there are little people listening. And I don't... So I try not to curse, but I'm, I'm a little bit riled up today. I do have my shirt on, 100% German, no sugar coating. If you're my German friend, then go to my Farming Without the Bank page and I think you can get the shirt on there. I think you can. Okay. If you guys have comments, questions, concerns, whatever, email me, maryjo at withoutthebank.com. Otherwise, have a fantastic rest of your day.